Well, now that you know all about the Towson offense, when we get back from this quick commercial break, Simon will break down the Towson defense. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Towson Game Day. George Johnson's wife is having a baby today, literally. So he's not the only one in luck right now because I'll be delivering you, get it, delivering, all the news about Towson sports. Brings the Tigers record to 2-4 and four overall, 0-2 oh in CAA play. It's time for our first commercial break, but when we return, we're going to break down last Saturday's game a little bit more. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Towson Game Day. Into the men's basketball season, the Tigers were picked to finish dead last in the CAA, and no one expected them to knock off local powerhouse Loyola last Friday. But the team had one thing to say to all those doubters out there. Bring your popcorn. And the popcorn was good. Let me take out the uh, house general. For the Tigers game, and we're going to good popcorn here. The Tigers game. Well, first and foremost, they have to stay healthy. Last year, they lost several guys up front on the offensive line, a couple of key receivers, both running backs were in and out with injuries. If they can stay healthy this year, they can put a lot of points on the board. But let's take a closer look at exactly what this offense is going to look like in the 2008 season. Tree, 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 tree. Towson's defense will bend, but don't break, right, Simon? Well, on this play, they broke. Uh, as in Tim Hightower breaking through the defense, dragging Towson defenders into the end zone. 21-17, Richmond takes the lead, and that makes their fans ecstatic as University of Richmond knocks off the Tigers 21-7. to What? 29 seconds left. <laughs> Game's over. There's no way Towson can do anything in 29 seconds. Okay, so right, 67 okay. yards to go for Sean Schaefer. 22 seconds. Game's still over, right? There's no yeah. way that Towson can win this game unless Sean Schaefer would, you know, Hit Demetrius Harrison up the sideline and get into Richmond territory. That was pretty good. Yeah, he got out of bounds, too. It could work. got out of bounds, stop the clock. All right, now, another short jump down to Demetrius Harrison, who gets out of bounds inside the 40. Uh-oh. Didn't he just Ten come seconds to go. Towson at the 37-yard line, and I really don't see them getting no 37 way. yards in 10 seconds. It can't happen. It's impossible. Oh, Schaefer finds Paul Perry over the middle to the 14-yard line. Just like that, Towson is 14 yards away from tying this game. And this is at the point where you say, hey, this could happen. Four seconds to go. One final play for the Tigers. What would happen is they go to the huddle, they draw up a play. We'll talk a little bit more about this draw up later and what this play was all about. But Schaefer with a chance to win the game. Closing moments. How about ice water in the veins of Sean Schaefer? Here's Demetrius Harrison. He's over for the touchdown. Let's take another look at it. Harrison. Barely gets two feet in as time expires. The Tigers let the celebration begin. Yep. They knock off the number 14 team in the country, the Richmond Spiders. They go on to win the game 23 to 21. It would be. We go to the third quarter and let the shootout begin. How about Whoop. David Newsom going to catch it and take it to the house? He could go all the way. Touchdown, Towson. Would set up this play by Kareem Huggins. That would have what I would say the fat lady hitting the high note ah. as the Tigers. That's what she said. Ah, as the Tigers would end the game right there. Kareem Huggins 57 yards into the end zone. At the halftime, the baby cubs, the little oh. kids coming in and showing Thompson. This is what I want you to do in the second half. That's what he said. This is what I want you to do. And Tommy Bro said, hey, little man, hey, little bro, I gotcha. Get in the end one alley-oop from Tim Crossing. Want to take another look at that once again. Crossing with the alley. Tommy with the oops upside your head, getting the yam. Trouching their way deep into Tiger territory, threatening to take the lead. How about Kenny Scott? Give me that. Steps in front of the interception, and he is down the left sideline. White, who rushed for 348 yards on the day, a Navy record. And on this play here, he would be smoking up the sidelines as Sean White, and he's going to cut it back here. And right there... You should start warming up the fat lady because she's about to perform as White gets all the way into the end zone. Navy goes on top of Towson here, 38 to 13. You break down this passing game. It's pretty interesting. You see they go five wide receivers, count them, one, two, three, four, five over your screen. Look at the top right of your screen. See number three? That's Marcus Lee. He's going to run a flare out, which is going to open up number five at the top of the screen to run a slant right over the middle. See, he runs the flare freeze. You see the Morgan State defense all looking at Marcus Lee. That one second of hesitation is all you need to allow Dayron Arnold to slip in behind the cornerback at the top of the screen and get the touchdown pass. Schaefer delivers the ball on the money for the easy touchdown. Mm -hmm. Now, what happens, Simon, if you cover Dayron Arnold and leave Marcus Lee? Take a look again. Marcus Lee again, number three on your screen. Dayron Arnold, number one at the bottom of your screen. Marcus Lee's going to flare out, and the two Morgan State defenders are both going to go with Dayron Arnold. Freeze it there. You see both guys doubling up on Dayron Arnold on a crucial fourth down play. That allows Sean Schaefer to throw the ball on time once again. 
Marcus Lee over the flat. That picks up the first down. And just like that, Towson's moving the chains. Towson is 3-0 at home this year, starting for the first time since the 1980s. Meanwhile, Temple has only played one road game this season, and that was a nine-point loss at Kent State. I had to talk with Sean Schaefer today. He said he's feeling fine. He feels like he can go. But as you mentioned, it's up to the health department as to whether or not they're going to allow him to play. I think the biggest issue is it's not how he's feeling, but uh -huh. how contagious he uh -huh. is. And can he be around other people? And I think that's the biggest concern right now if you're talking. Exactly some of the things that went wrong in the secondary. Some of it was New Hampshire scheme and some of it wasn't. You see they lined three wide receivers up, one, two, three on the left side here. And then because of that, it's going to clear all of this space right here on that side because those guys cleared it out and he's able to run in for the touchdown. Now, why was he still open even though Tottenham was in man coverage? Well, let me show you the same play from the other angle. These are the two linebackers. The X guy here is going to blitz. That's Alex Butt. Josh Root is the circle. He's number 52. His job is to cover the tailback who's right here on the right of your screen. So his job is to cover that tailback as he goes out. And if you watch, he's going to take a step to his left first and then go right. And that extra second is all it took yep. for that back to be able to sneak out to that side and get into the end zone. So little mistakes in the secondary for the Tigers came back to bite them. The last and final key for the Tigers is going to be to play with pride. Coming off their humiliating road loss to New Hampshire, the Tigers are going to have to find a way to get motivated to play this huge game at home against William & Mary. If the Tigers do not match that intensity, then the number 16 team in the country will walk away with a big win against the Tigers. ...who have decided to test the waters of the NBA. Here's where I stand. If you can't swim, why test the waters? Newsflash, guys, you couldn't help the Terps get by in Manhattan in the first round of the NIT. What in the blue hell makes you think you're ready for the NBA? They had the best record in the NBA, darn it, 67 wins, and he adjusts to fit the game of an 18 in, in game one of the playoffs? Are you kidding me? He goes small ball with one of the best small ball coaches in the game? That's crazy. Of course, because of the fact that he's coaching in South Bend. Of course he's on the hot seat. He has to be on the hot seat at this point. Notre Dame would fire their own mothers if they were losing. It doesn't matter. Every fan would be screaming for his own mom's head if that was the reason Notre Dame was losing. They won't. So here are my thoughts. Spitting through a player's face mask, that's one thing. Throwing a punch is another thing. But to grab another player's testicles, that's where I draw the line. That is sickening, and Evans should be suspended for next season, seeing as those playoff hopes are coming to an end. It's the wrong time for Donovan McNabb to come out and say this. He couldn't have picked the worst time. The Eagles are 0-2. They've already lost to the Green Bay Packers, who apparently are okay this year. They've already lost to the Redskins. They aren't putting up big numbers. This is the absolute worst time because now it looks like he's just looking for a cop-out on an excuse when the truth is there is some merit to what he's saying. Yes, black quarterbacks are scrutinized a little bit more, but let's not forget the fact that black quarterbacks have come a long way since the times of Doug Williams. Welcome here to Johnny United Stadium, home of the Towson University Tigers. I am DA Daniel Abraham, sitting alongside Jeff Kozlowski and Simon Hap to marry him. And guys, this is going to be one heck of a battle here. Opening day, everyone's excited. Jeff, talk about the atmosphere at this game. Welcome back here to the Towson Center, where the Tigers lead 85 to 57. Now, this is a very uncharacteristic game for when Towson meets Georgia State. They two teams have met four times over the last two years, with each game being decided by an average of less than five points. However, clearly not the case today. Although they like to get right back out and start the next play, doesn't give the defense a lot of time to set it. Schaefer with four wide receivers now, and Rasheed McLeod to his left. Here's Schaefer, the handoff to McLeod. He spins, gets around to the outside. He's up to the 40. He's got a lot of room. Rasheed McLeod down to the 40. He could go. He's at the 30, to the 20. He's still on his feet to the 10-5. Touchdown, Rasheed McLeod. He just took it 60 plus yards all the way to the end zone and the Tigers are on the board for the first time this season with Sheep McLeod touchdown 60 yards for the Tigers what a run what, what a, a run. job blocking oh my god that was such a run if you actually see that well it's a good day to be an Abraham here at Towson University in our CAA telecast there is our sideline reporter today Daniel Abraham showing off a little rain welcome back to halftime where the Tigers lead Georgia State 50 to 31 Gary Neal has 28 first half points. Well, every men's and women's CAA basketball game, we take a look at what else is going on in the conference. Right now, it seems that the Tigers are the aggressive ones offensively. They're attacking the basket, they're taking the shots, and they're doing a pretty good job of holding Loyola to just four points in these first five minutes, so a pretty good job defensively.
to his several highlight slam dunks, as well as landing him second in the CAA in block shots per game with just over two per outing. So Al, Glenn, two X factors for these two teams. Which one will have the bigger impact on today's game? We'll just have to wait and see.